Good morning, sweet friends. Welcome to the Rebookery channel. This is Gina. I want to spend a little bit of time this morning thanking you for all of you guys that uh, purchased one of my mini albums that I had in my Etsy shop yesterday. And I wanted to give you guys some hints, tips, and tricks on how to work or how I work in mini albums and what was some of my inspiration when I first got started. And if you didn't get one of the mini albums yesterday, I'm hoping to give you guys some insight and some tips on how you can maybe make your own mini album if you wanted something that has that same feel as one of those little chunky handmade books. So I probably should have started with this video um, at the beginning of this series, but I'm kind of working backwards. So let me show you um, where I actually started with mini books and where I got my inspiration and my ideas from. So here are some books that I just pulled from my, my stash of inspiration books. And these were ones that I used as, as my teachers when I was learning how to make mini books and when I was exploring that whole idea of taking miniature stories and putting them in a, a smaller book, not in a large scrapbook or a large journal. So this first one is called Sharing Your Story, Recording Life's Details with Mini Books. And this was by Allie Edwards. And in this book, she it's a very thick book, so you're going to get lots of ideas. But in this book, she pulled from different artists and had them show you their mini books. And then they would do a little story about how they... Um, created their mini book, what were the materials they used, what was the inspiration, what were the ideas. I poured over this book um, time and time again and lots of my ideas came from this book. They were ones that were simple, ones that were interactive and more chunky. Um, there was, I think that the one I did with the uh, CDs, I think that idea came from here. This was a really cool one. This was um, bringing in fabric and and um, crocheting and things like that. I love this. This is by Emily Falconbridge, and she used to be an art journaler. Um, I think she still might, but she does a lot with um, fabrics and fibers now. But oh my gosh, I just love her style. And I remember I just sat and poured over this page and tried to figure out how to recreate um, this mini album. Here was one using like the, the clear acrylics that um, some of you guys purchased uh, journals that'll have some clear acrylic pages. Um, anyway, this was just a great inspiration for me um, to get my feet wet. And this book came out, oh, I love, I love the messy. I love when there's just a lot going on. And here's just those ring binders or those binder rings. Here's one where they use chipboard, but then they just tied it with, this is Emily Falconbridge again, where she just tied it with trim or some ribbon. Um, so hopefully you can find this book and uh, maybe get some inspiration. So this was Sharing Your Story by Allie Edwards. Another book was um, by Margaret Couch Cogswell. This was called Book Play, and this was more about like how to, how to make these books, how to do stitches, um, how to bind your pages together. This was some Coptic stitching, which I still have never done. Um, how to fold your paper, the materials and the materials. So this was kind of more of a um, foundational book, but it did have some really good ideas in here. Okay, so like look at this one. This was thinking outside of the box, thinking outside of the book, taking an old tape dispenser, and then your book, your story is little snippets of paper that is embedded in the tape. I mean, that's that's genius. That wasn't anything I was interested in. I was just obsessed with the whole book thing, but in this uh, publication. She showed how you can take things other than books, things other than papers, um, and turn them into into your mini stories. Like this was a storyboard on wheels. I thought that was kind of cool. 
Um, so I didn't get too much into the art part of this where she was making other things, but I did think it was just uh, just so much inspiration. Like this, taking an, a, a little old box and then putting your story in that box. And I know there was a big thing with the um, oh Altoid mint tins, and this was kind of a play on that and just taking your little story and putting it in a tin. Now I did do a couple of those. I thought that was I thought that was kind of cool. So this was look at that. Oh, I love that. And that's that's some binding right there, some hand stitching and it's a wrap around. Yeah. So this was this was a great book to to get my um, foundational processes and the techniques and stuff I wanted to use. There's this one where there was fabric and I'm I'm still trying to incorporate fabric into into my books. This book was just fun, just fun. So this was by Lynn Perella. It's called Alphabetica. This was a um, collection of artists and they all made these mini books and then they would send them to each other, I think. And oh my gosh, again, I like the pages are worn because I've used them so much. And these these gals, they thought outside of the box look like this one made, was made out of a lunch box. I don't know if you can see that. This this mini album was made out of a lunch box. Um, talk about using some crazy materials. This was the accordion book where you pull it out and it's like a square and then you pull it out. And I actually have a couple of those. I made a travel album. We took a short little vacation one summer and I turned in, um, the, the trip into an accordion album. And I just, oh, I love it. And then this was just taking regular binding and then adding some other extra binding so you could have it flip out the other way. Using different textured materials, incorporating wood and fibers, um, pulling in antique items. I mean, this this really pushed my creativity. This book made me think, oh my gosh, can you really do that? Like, can can you really pull that off? And and it really pushed my boundaries. It made me make connections between things that my brain hadn't been ready to make connections with yet. Um, so I loved this book and I still go back to this book for inspiration. I love how this one opens up and then it opens up on the sides. There's one in here that I kept going to. I'll see if I can find it. Um, oh, look at this one. So she cut down alphabet blocks, those wooden alphabet blocks. And that became, she glued them on some chipboard and that became the cover of her book. I mean, oh my gosh. So these are definitely going to use some unconventional materials. And that's, that's what I love about mini albums. That's what I love about the, it's not just paper. And, and I think that's what I love about like the chipboard and stuff is because it has a different feel to it. It has, it's heavy, it's thick, it's it's more like a book. I'm trying to look for this one. There's some fold outs and you can really make them interactive. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's see if it's in here. I might have already passed it. Either that or I'm just totally imagining things. Love this, like the transfer so they would also talk about different art techniques that they would use. So this was some transfer techniques and how you can do your different transfers. This was kind of when I was big into the transfers. Oh, I can't remember which one it is that I wanted to show you guys. Anyway, excellent, excellent book. I love this book. I think it was actually, sorry. I know if I'm making you sick, I, I apologize. Um, I think it was actually, well, this one, okay, so this one was cool. This was uh, by an artist named Sarah Fishburne. So she would just go around the streets in the city that she lives in, and she would peel off all of the flyers and papers and advertisements that were just stuck on um, the sides of, like, kiosk machines and um, street poles and you know things like that and and so she would just incorporate those in her books but there's this one hmm, might have been this one right here I think it was this one right here where these were all um 
So she used old photos of these girls that were at, this was like a, a picture of some girls that were um, at school a long, long, long time ago. And she just, she used these images through her mini album and it just, I don't know, just the old fashionedness of this and the way she incorporated the old with the new um, really kind of spoke to me. I, I really liked that one. I spent a lot of time looking at that one. Um, so probably because I had inherited a bunch of photos from my grandmother at that time. And so I was just trying to figure out ways to incorporate them. So that one's called Alphabetica. Okay, then the last one is called The Adventurous Scrapbooker. And this is by Catherine Duncan um, Amoni. All right, so this one is, again, going to push your creativity. This is... This is where you start to break out of that mold. So she starts off at the beginning talking about, you know, what materials you want to use, all that good stuff, um, how she works with photos. And then she jumps right into it and starts showing you all of these different mini albums. Now, again, these are different artists and they've contributed to this book. So I loved this because, again, totally pushing you outside of just that square book or that journal that's you know just I mean it's three-dimensional but it's it's a journal and and now we're going to push a little bit and we're going to change the shape and we're going to change the orientation we're going to change how we interact with this book so I loved this one because we've restored a couple of homes and the last one we restored um, I still can't even talk about today because it, it breaks my heart that we had to leave it. But, um, I eventually at some point, it's been 10 years, it's been 11 years since we moved from that house. I eventually at some point want to document our restoration that we did to this home. And so I, I want to use something like this. And she just used a, a book that was in the shape of a house. Now I'm sure this was store-bought, but I can make something that symbolizes that house. I've even thought about cutting out cardboard in the shape of the house because it was a 1940s, 1950s um, house and I just mid-century modern and I I just I want to document it and I loved this and how she played around with photos, kept them black and white but then she would go back in and she would add color to them. So loved that. Still still go back to that. This one was a fabric album and just used some simple ties or some, some ribbon and stuff to um, hold those together. So this one was a first aid tin and the book actually fit inside of this old um, tin and the book was just these cards and it, they weren't bound together. They were just a collection of the cards. And I did recreate something like that. I didn't put it in a tin like that, but I did. I just made a little set of cards. And each little card was, I think it was on my kids. And each little card told a little story. And then I just put them all in a little box. And I just love the, the random pages and how their handwriting on here trying to think oh this is Sarah Fishburne again how the handwriting on here she just did in pencil and just just print handwriting nothing fancy and just photo an old book page and some handwriting I I think that is just that is so simple and that is that is so pure and I I love that that oh that speaks volumes to me here's another accordion here's a baby book Oh, I loved this. So this was tapping in my rebookery, Sarah Fishburne again. She took an old spelling book and she turned it into a journal. And yeah, love it, love it, love it. And she kept the book intact. And I don't know if she pulled pages out or not, but she kept the book intact, which is originally how I started rebooking is I kept all the pages and stuff intact. I would pull some out to get rid of the bulk. Well, my first ones I didn't because I didn't know any better. But yeah, so... That, oh, that, that, this gets me goosebumps just looking at this book. So here's another one using an old book. And then this time they gessoed over the pages. And gesso is just like a primer. Um, you can get it colored, usually white. And um, it just makes your pages ready to accept artwork. And it kind of makes them a little bit thicker. So this is another one that I loved because, like I said, she used an old book. And she just gessoed over the pages lightly so that the, the print would appear through. But then she put all of her um, good stuff, her journaling and scrapbooking stuff on top of it. This is using some different materials. I love this one. This one was about doors. This was a pamphlet that... 
she got in the mail and didn't want to throw away like you know an Ikea catalog or something and she turned it into um, a story about um, I think this was her son had gone on a trip to Rwanda and so she turned this into a journal about that totally love that because she's recycling she's using something that was already there this one's after my heart too because this is a like she took um, and made like little recipe cards and then stuck it in a container and then she pulled in all of this old um, food clippings and and travel ephemera and she she put the two together which I thought was so cool because this this really pushed me to make connections okay Erica gum she or, or Erika Arikia gum maybe that might be her name but I think it's Erica anyway great artist um, she did a lot with scrapbooking, but she made a couple of mini albums in here that were awesome. So this was one where she was documenting a trip and she used uh, photos and then postcards and she married the two together so that her photos would be almost like superimposed on top of um, vintage uh, postcards, if that makes any sense totally love it because you really have to think and you're like oh my gosh is that like her is that real you know what what is real what is not what is old what is new and then she would journal on the back of the postcard this got me so excited I just um yeah that was that was just un, unreal and if if you didn't want to glue right on the the postcards this is where your transparencies could come in where you could put a transparency put your picture on top of the transparency and then just lay the transparency over the the postcard that way you keep your postcard intact and then you have but when it lays down it looks like it's all all one one page that was very cool uh, here was another one where I think this is where I kind of got that idea for that my son's camp and battle book where I made out of the corrugated cardboard and made it real woodsy and the thing about mini albums that I love is just, and I know I've said this before, look at this one, in an old tin box. And these were all about Christmas and Christmas ornaments. And each one of them was a tag. Each of the pages was a tag. And they're not, they're not bound together. Books don't have to be bound together. You don't have to bind things together to tell a story. Um, anyway, so sorry, back to what I was saying. I just, I love the, 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 the difference, um, of picking up a mini album. You just know instantly. I mean, there's something about holding a journal and you, you, you get that ugh, feel whenever you hold that journal, you're just like, oh, this is heaven. Many books have that same or many albums have that same feel, but just in a different way. And it's just using those different materials, different pages, this one was out of felt. This is where I really got into felting. Oh, by the way, I have been felting up a storm. I have found a bunch of old sweaters and I am, yeah, doing some felting. These, these homebody journals are going to be stacked with some fabric and fibers. Okay, love this one. This is Stephanie McAtee. She actually um, is, is from this Kansas City area. I, I don't know her personally. I just remember reading a lot about her in some uh, scrapbooking books and journals and stuff but she used old cds and she documented of all things her high school son's wrestling season i mean how would you put the two together isn't that just awesome and just rough and raw and she used electrical tape and nothing is perfect and and black and white photos and color photos and i just love the mix of that this one um, looks like it's a it's a cookbook, and I can't tell if they left. It's one of the binder cookbooks, like if they pulled it apart. It looks like they pulled it apart and just used binder rings. This one is another one of those nature ones where it folds out and they use twigs and stuff. So, yeah, just love these books, and I love looking through them and getting some inspiration. So now let's talk about if you want to make a mini book. What are some things that that you maybe need? Well, you may think that you need to go out and buy chipboard, and that is so not true. Now, I don't know because I haven't looked for mini album things recently, but I'm sure if you go to your craft store, you can find they they did sell mini album kits where they would sell the chipboard and it was already cut and it had the holes punched and all that good stuff and it was raw 
and then you would just paint or collage over top of it. You don't have to do that. You certainly can. And in the ones that I sold um, yesterday on Etsy, and I think I still have one journal left, but in the books that I sold, I mixed, I broke down all of the kits that I had accumulated over the years, and I just would put them inside of those, those journals. So you will have some raw chipboard. But what you can do with the raw chipboard is that you can paint it. So this is just, I put a coat, a very light coat of white paint or gesso just as a primer. And now, now I have that white background. You don't have to do that. You absolutely don't. And you can use any color that you want. So I know in the binder book that somebody purchased yesterday, I had gessoed all of the pages. Um, I think this actually came out of that. So they're all prepped and primed and ready for you. But let's say you don't have the time or the money or whatever to go out and buy your own chipboard. Well, you don't need to. You have stuff in your home. And this actually is where you get really creative and you start making those, those connections. So just go around your house and try to find some chipboard. So one of the places to look is on the back of paper pads. You've got a nice piece of chipboard right here. And all you have to do, depending on how old it is, is you can just cut it off or you can just tear it off. Okay, so there's a piece of chipboard right there. All of your cereal boxes, there, there's chipboard right there. Now they're a little bit thinner. So what I would do is I would sand the shiny sides and then glue two pieces together to make them a little thicker. Or you can keep them thinner, it's totally up to you. So once you have your chipboard, what are the things that you can do to it other than than paint. Well, one of the, the things that I love to do is to cover them with paper. And there's a couple of things you kind of, well, you don't need to know, like you could do it without knowing these things, but there's a couple of things that will make this process a little easier. So let me, let me show you, I'm going to use this little piece right here and let me show you um, a couple of things that I learned while I was making mini book. Okay. So if you don't want to paint, you could definitely cover with paper. And so one of the things I liked to do, and I'm just gonna do a really quick version of this here. I would honestly take more time um, if I were really making this into a mini album, but I would just take my glue oops, and cover the whole, oh, good grief. There we go. Oh my gosh, look, that glue crunchy is still on my finger. I would color, cover the whole thing with glue. And you wanna make sure the whole thing is covered because if you don't, you're gonna notice it when your paper dries. So you want this, I personally, I liked for this to be a nice even look. Now you don't have to, if you want bubbles and wrinkles and stuff like that, if you're going for that look, absolutely. Um, you don't have to have it perfect. But I kind of found that if I evened my glue out and used a paintbrush, that it just made it for a nicer, it laid better. So then I will just glue my paper over top and I would smooth out any bubbles. If you have a card on hand, that's always something good to use or a brayer. And then you're going to want to cut around the edges. So what I used to cut around the edges was I used um, just a craft knife or a box cutter. And I didn't go get anything fancy. And you can use a ruler to help guide you. I just kind of use the cardboard to help guide. And once I figured out this trick, it made this process so much easier because I was trying to use my scissors and I just wasn't getting the cut that I was looking for because, you know, you're going to have a little bit of um, allowance on that, on using your scissors because you got to be able to get your blade in. And so this way I could get right up to the chipboard or the book board 
And if you have, like right here, I ripped it a little bit, that's okay because let me show you what we're gonna do. So I would kind of let this dry, but for time right now, I'm not gonna let it dry. So once I had this, I really didn't like that hard edge. So I would always go back in with some sandpaper and I would just go and sand around these edges and kind of get that hard edge off. And, and what it did was it made it look worn. And it honestly, it made it look like the paper was supposed to be there from the beginning. And this is where if I had any imperfections, where if I had any little rips or tears in my paper, it was okay because I was just gonna sand over it and it just kind of adds to the character. And I loved this process. Like I made sure that I always did this. It just made it look like it was meant to be together. So I'll pull this up here a little bit and let you guys see. I don't know if you can see, but you can just see how those edges are just ever so slightly, they're worn. And that's the look I was, I was going for. Now, maybe you don't want that look and that's okay. You would just skip that process. But then that whole rip right there, look at that. It just looks like it was supposed to be there. So then take this one step further. So you could do the same thing on the back. You don't have to use one piece of paper. You could collage, and then once you've collaged, go through with your craft knife and cut all of it, the stuff off, all of the extras. Or you could paint like this. That's totally fine. So then what I would do is I would always like to do something to my edges. Just, I don't know, sometimes just adds a little extra detail. Got a couple of options here. The first thing you can do is just take an ink pad, and again, I'd wait till this is dry because you don't want to get glue in your ink pad, which I have done several times. And you can just run your ink pad along the edge. And then what it does is it now gives you a nice little outline. And again, just adds just another dimension, just kind of makes it look a little finished, maybe, is what I'm looking for. And I just, I don't know, there's just something about just that outlining, that shading, and it just really kind of makes, brings that page together, or this little, this little card or whatever, tag or whatever, brings it together. The other trick, and I'll show you on this right here, is let's say, well, hang on here. Let's do, I don't know, I'm feeling like this is a little blank. All right, let's do something here because I'm gonna add just a little bit of paper. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just playing around. So let's add some paper. Just do a little bit of collaging here. Nothing major. I'm just using scrap paper. I don't even have a, a clue what I'm gonna do with this page once I've done it, but it's all right. All right, let's pull in. Oops. Oh, I am totally getting messy here. Now, obviously, if I wasn't so lazy, I'd reach over two feet away from me and grab a paintbrush. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of in the moment right now, guys. So I know that's in the way. Okay. And ooh. Let's see, what else do we have? Ooh, uh -uh. let's do this. Let's just, let's just do it, shall we? Okay, we'll add a little bit of fabric. Why the heck not? And add some of that. And then, hang on, now I got an idea. 
So I have some masking tape. I love using masking tape, but I also got this tape. Um, and check this out. Like, I don't even know. I think it's like packing tape, some sort of packing tape. The texture is weird. It's got these little strings through it. Oh, and I like that. I like it, like it, like it. And I'm okay if my masking tape has little crinkles and stuff in it. That's totally fine with me. It just adds to the texture, adds to the character. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this masking tape. This is a hot mess, that's for sure. All right. All right, I've played around enough here. Ooh, look, there's some string on that one. Let's just keep it. Let's just keep it. Adds a little texture. Okay, and then look at this. This is a sock. Nothing goes to waste at my house, people. So here's what I did. I cut off the top of the sock. That went in my sewing scraps box. And then this is now a dust rag. Isn't that sad? <laughs> I swear, in a former life, I think I lived in the, um, I think I lived in the Great Depression. I think I did. Okay, so now I would go over here and I'm going to trim all of this off. And it, like I said, it works better when you let this dry. You just want to make sure your blade is really sharp. And you don't have to have a fancy um, name brand scrapbooking box cutter or craft knife, I think is what they call them. Guys, I just got this out of the um, worker man's section. And yeah, I like it. It's a utility knife. Okay, check that out. Doesn't that look good? And now all I gotta do is go back and poke my holes. Okay, so back to what I was doing. <laughs> Another tip that you can do is you can take the edge and then just take a little bit of paint. Ooh, you know what? Now that I did blues, I really don't want purple. Let me get something else. Yeah, buddy, we're gonna go neon orange. Why? I don't know, because we can. Because there are no rules. All right, so then you just take your paint and just smear it around. And it gives it a little bit of detail, gives it a little bit of a finished edge. Yeah, totally cool. Now, again, I my style is messy and some of you guys have a different style and that's fine. You just adapt this to your style. Yeah, check that out. Woohoo! Ooh. Now I got neon paint. Oh, now. So I can let this dry. Actually, I think it goes this way. I can let this dry. And then this is a journal page. This is this is a page that's going to go in my in my story, in my book. Um, and now I can put photos on top of it. So if I had some photos, I could place my photos on top of it. Um, here's some photos of some fabric and stuff. And, and then I could tuck in some little journaling um, spots or some fabric in the back and kind of, ooh, I could stitch around it. I could glue it. I could staple it. But there you go. That's and it's and it's something different. And I'm telling a story and it's just a different texture and I really love that string that's hanging off of it. <laughs> um, and it's just a different texture. It's thick. It's it's hefty. It's it's like a a board book. Um and I I loved board books. And and you think about it, when your kids had board books, why did they love them? Oh, because they were they were heavy, they were easy to handle, they were small, the pages were easy to turn, and it was a simple story. And that's kind of the idea of, of mini albums. So, yeah, I did a lot of rambling on this. Um, I hope I gave you guys some inspiration or some ideas, and I hope you guys can go and create something today. And for those of you guys that order journals from me, I will take yours to the post office tomorrow. Um, and so hopefully you will have some fun creating with all of those interesting little nuggets that you guys um, will get in your journals. 
And for the rest of you guys, go out and make one. Go go search through your kitchen. Find some cracker boxes or some cereal boxes. Um, oh, how about this? How about packaging from all those scrapbook pads and things that you have? These, This is perfect. This is the perfect heft and the perfect weight. And you could leave it single or you could, um, like I said, sand it and then glue the, um, the sides together and make it a little bit thicker. And then get creative and make fold outs and accordions and pockets and yeah. And just have a lot of fun. Guys, thank you for hanging out with me this morning. I need to go have some more coffee. I hope you have a um, great rest of the day. I hope you guys are safe and warm and happy. And um, do something creative today. Bye.